Good morning Eastbourne, just thought I'd jump on and have a quick conversation about a topic that is super 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 important in the sense of this is probably one of the most overlooked things in our uh, in our diets today that could be causing more issues than you ever believe. Sugar is probably one of the most controversial things on the planet and it used to be back in, in, in the 1500s, it used to cost something like $200 or 200 pounds per kilo. And nowadays generally costs about 50 pence per kilo. And with modern farming techniques and agriculture, we've managed to bring the prices all the way down. But what we understand about sugar is sugar is the most refined version of what you can get from the cane sugar plant or the beet sugar plant, or even they use in the States a lot of corn syrup. But what we ha what happens when you refine sugar down to its absolute minimum product is what we do is we take something called the fiber out of the plant. And as a result, this will massively speed up the ingestion and digestion of this substance. However, what we've got to understand about sugar is it's been pretty much linked to every single metabolic syndrome pretty much known to man. Sugar actually feeds cells that are rapidly dividing. So interestingly enough, if you can think about a disease, which is a very rapidly dividing cell disease, it's cancer and pretty much sugar has been very heavily linked to the speed up in the growth of cancer cells. It's also been linked to increased levels of inflammation. Now, what we know is if a body is constantly inflammation, again, that can increase the volumes of cancer cells. However, pretty much every single disease known to man starts with an inflammatory response, e.g. if you tear a tendon, a ligament, they all have an inflammatory response. If you get something called dermatitis, which is inflammation of the skin, itis is the suffix for inflammation so anything where you where you hear the word itis on the end there's an inflammatory condition All right cystitis cholecystitis again colons uh, and then into our urinary tracts these all have the word itis on the end because essentially they mean inflammation now the other really interesting thing about sugar is it is a combination of something called sucrose and fructose and sucrose absolutely fine but fructose interesting enough this is actually the sugar that we get majority from fruit however in fruit you have fiber and when you have fiber this tells your brain you are full however if you eat fructose without having the fiber what do you think happens to your body now interestingly enough we have we have got hormones in our body that identify when we've eating glucose so when we eat carbohydrates we break things down into glucose however when we eat fructose which is what you get from normal table sugar or cane sugar you'll actually find that when it breaks it down to its individual parts there is no hormone in our body that identifies when you have eaten fructose therefore there is never a signal to your brain to tell you that you've actually eaten the fructose now if there's no signal to your brain to tell you that you've eaten the fructose how do your body know when to stop eating? So you'll just continue and continue to eat the calories, despite the fact, despite the fact that your brain should be telling you that you are full, and it doesn't, it doesn't stop. And so as a result, what happens is people can eat mounds and mounds and mounds of sugar without even knowing that they're full. Now, interestingly enough, the, the last and most interesting thing about sugar, and I call it the sweet poison because it literally is what it says on the tin. The more we eat, the more addicted we get. And what they've actually linked is that if you put if you put someone in an MRI scanner or a CT scanner or an electrocogram and you actually take wave signals or signals from the brain to show the levels of activity in people's brains when they are exposed to uh, cocaine or heroin or sugar, interestingly, all of these substances light up the same part of the brain. And the reason being is that they're actually lighting up those addictive sensors in our brain or those dopamine sensors that are linked to the pleasure response. So when we eat sugar, we get this short-term pleasure response. And as a result, what we then find is chasing that fix. So just to note, sugar, one of the most inflammatory foods that we can eat one of the one of the worst digested foods cannot be hormonally recognized in our body contains absolutely no fiber contains absolutely zero nutritional benefit 
and yet it can cause all of these issues metabolically with our body. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how to give up sugar, there's an absolutely brilliant book by David Gillespie and it is called The Sweet Poison and it explains exactly how all of these processes work in a little bit more detail but it was one of the most interesting books I probably read last year uh, about how sugar massively affects us. Now there are three parts in the series. There is The uh, Sweet Poison which is the initial book that tells you about all of the effects of sugar. Then there's The Quit Plan that teaches you how to actually cut down and then finally there's actually a recipe book which shows you how to cook without the sugar in. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how to cut out on sugar there's some ways there. Uh, equally we have tons and tons of resources uh, we've got a load of resources on our uh, facebook and our youtube channel with recipes and ideas that you can use in order to actually maybe help yourself there as well guys i hope you're having a beautiful day the sun's going to be out again apparently it's going to be an absolutely sweltering week so enjoy it and we will speak to you again very very soon that's all time from patrick here at complete healthy spawn we'll speak to you soon